Hi everybody. Having connected my batteries to my fuse panel, it is now time to install the Renogy One M1. Now this is going to be my main control panel. Six Bluetooth connections and 200 Zigbee connections. Let's see how we get on. So first thing first, when you've got one of these units, um, you need to decide where it's going to go in your camper van. There is a mounting unit and there is a mounting plate. If it's a new build, um, then it's probably easy enough to cut out a panel and fit this directly. If you have an existing camper van, or like me, it's built with something that wasn't intended to have uh, these types of things mounted, you've got to come up with another solution. So I'm going to have to rip out my old switch panel which isn't the same size as this, surprise, surprise. Uh, I manufactured a plate for this to mount on so I can fit it within the van. But for today's purposes and for you to see how it all fits, I'm gonna install it on the bench here along with all my existing equipment. It's very simple to install, allegedly. You have a power cable that plugs into the back of the unit and the positive and negative terminals what that will fit on top of the battery. I am going to fit this via the fuse panel. Um, it doesn't say you have to. It doesn't mention fuses. So, you, so you've got 200 amp hours. I've got 400 amp hours of energy here. And you may get an electronic fault in here, a short, whatever. I don't know, spill water on it. Um, and you can potentially generate a scenario where the 400 amps goes and tries to go down this wire and it won't it'll melt the wire that's for sure but that energy burst will definitely destroy the unit so I'm gonna put a fuse in it so now I fit my fuse it's a five amp fuse because I don't have a smaller one now it's time for the big switch on I've not switched this on yet, so this is a, a journey of exploration. I have agreed and read the policy, yes. Continue. Searching for an internet. I don't want a network. So there's our first problem. It seems that we cannot move forward without an internet connection. Update now. Once you've got the Wi Fi logged in, you'll be presented with this screen to download the DC Home app. So, using my iPad, I'll see if we can scan this. So it takes me to the Renogy home page and now I download the home app. So now we have to log in to the app, which means I have to set up an account. So it was asking me to rescan the batteries. So it can't find my battery and I, I've pushed it again to rescan looking for the device. So two new batteries and I haven't activated them. So I now need to work out how I'm going to activate these two batteries so that they will power up and they can be seen on here. So this is becoming a little bit more complex than I imagined. As you can see, I've now just switched on my inverted charger. So now if I look, I've got two batteries seeing on the Renogy One. So now I'm going to add them. Okay. So the app is telling me that I've got my batteries uh, fully charged in 16 hours. It's 41% charged, 14.7 amps at the moment going in there. Um, battery one and battery two. And if I look at the Renogy app, 
we're getting exactly the same reading. So that's great. So my Renergy One unit is now working. So before I take all the switches apart and secure the Renergy One to the bulkhead, now that we've got it all working, I am going to wire in a light. So I've got a light up here that I'm going to use to light up my electrical cabinet and I'll use the switch on the outside. So quite simply, all I'm going to do is run an earth cable from the earth buzz bars here for the, for the services up to the light. And then I'm going to run a power line from a fused buzz bar here to the input of the switch. And then from the output of the switch, it will run to the light itself. And so in theory, I'll be able to switch the cabinet light on and off from that switch there. So this is <clears throat> to the light. So that's the out terminal here. The fuse is in. I'm going to put power on now. The inverter charge is running. So hopefully we can now see that the Renegy One is powering up again. It's maintained the knowledge of the battery. It's made that it's, can, it's kept the Bluetooth link, telling me it's forty percent, uh, and it's currently charging. And switch one, this one, and the light has come on. Nice little switch action. So there we go. A Renegy One connected to a battery and with a light switch. All we've got to do now is pop this into that bulkhead cover. So according to the book, this switch and this switch cover should just pop out. Now I've already loosened this one and there you go, it does pop out. And you can see the four, two little screw holes here. Let's see if we can get this one out. Now I would be very careful with this because I don't want to snap the switch. I hate them when they do this. No, oh, there we go. So if you're careful, and I got away with it, they clearly, the two covers pop out and the four securing screws are fitted here. So we now have our unit with our four holes ready to go into these spots here. You'll notice all the cables have come through and it's something to think about when you when you're installing this unit is that you've got three switches potentially three switches for cables coming through here so that's six cables you've got a power cable you've got a CAN bus or RS485 connector possibly and a USB type C and so that's got to come out of the panel or from behind the panel which means that you should be running them and in through conduit and through cable runs and because you're going to add stuff or maybe you don't build it all at once or you may add it later you've got to be able to think about how you get to those cables and fit them neatly and safely so they survive the duration of the van um, so that's just something to think about that's just a cosmetic problem but still a problem nevertheless so all we've got to do now is it clips into place and then we're going to use these incredibly small, tiny screws, four of them. And that means we need a small Phillips screwdriver. These screws are so small, if you drop them, you'll never find them. Fortunately, they've got given you six screws in the packet. Or they gave me six screws in my packet. Um, so I'm using a slightly magnet magnetized screwdriver just to give me half a chance of actually getting the screws in the right place. Screws on, gently clip the Switch covers back in place. The clips are in the center, so that's good. All got it secured to the mounting. 
time to put power on. So power goes on. My light switch, my light switch is working. The display unit has come up and it all looks like it's functioning really well. So it connects to the Renogy Bluetooth units very, very quickly and without too much drama. The challenge I had was that my batteries were in a dormant state and so I had to quickly rig up the inverter charger to pull them out of that uh, hibernation state, which didn't work too particularly well. So I then took the batteries into the van and I installed the, a new Renogy uh, Bluetooth MPPT controller. And this unit immediately picked up that unit and displayed what was happening between the panels and the batteries. And so what I'll do is later on, I will come back and do a program for the installation of all the other components on the Renogy One M1. Up to six uh, Bluetooth units, which is probably all the things I will have for the Renogy. Uh, um, plus I'll need to install a fridge, which is running on Bluetooth controller as well. And let's see how that gets on. Uh, but the other pieces that I'll be interested in is the 200 Zigbee connections. Uh, where I envisage installing uh, tank levels, tank monitorings, heat temperature levels, temperature monitorings. Um, I've seen some of the demo stuff from Renogy where they're using the Renogy One to make the van level, so using hydraulic ramps to put it in the right positions. So it seems like it could be quite useful for lots of functions on the van. So as I said, check back and we'll see about how we add more and more items to this unit and see how it works. As it stands today, it connected quickly to my iPhone, it connected quickly to my iPad, and I even monitor it from my laptop in the, in the home. So as long as the Wi-Fi is running, then you can uh, check what's going on within the van. I don't like the fact that you have to be registered to the Wi-Fi before you can connect to your apps with this unit. And I also found that the screen is so small that the letters and numbers were tiny and it took several attempts to put in my password because I've got thick fudgy hands to get the right capitals and numbers and and small letters into the, the screen intuitively it's quite straightforward so here we are my nice shiny Renogy One M1 monitoring system on step one I'm Graham this is Mobile Adventures and thank you for watching mm -hmm.